sure to secure the locks on the doors every hour. Is that to keep our residents in or the weird stuff out? I was like, oh, this is going to be exciting. It turned out to be anything but. I'm just freaked out. This is pretty strange. We travel a secluded road. This woman appeared in front of my car. I had to get out of there. Are you okay? It's an image that's embedded in my brain. Something was up. And I was terrified. I was terrified. in an isolated group home on the outskirts of town. Darcy has recently started a new job. I work in group homes uh, for adults with um, developmental exceptionalities. Tonight is his first graveyard shift. He will be on his own until dawn. And he is well aware that the facility is believed to be haunted. A lot of people kind of warned me before my first overnight that stuff might happen in the night. I was intrigued because I've always been so interested in the spirit realm. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be exciting. I thought this would be an exciting moment for me. Hey, sir. Hey. And it turned out to be anything but. It's about uh, 10 PM, you should get going. So be sure to do the bed checks and secure the locks on the doors every hour, including the basement. Super important. Is that to keep our residents in or the weird stuff out? My coworker, she was a bit nervous, which I found very odd. All of a sudden, we hear the doorbell. No one else should be coming into the house right now. Expecting anyone? It's a little late, don't you think? It's been happening all day, Darcy. My coworker got really freaked out by this. I'll go check it out. I peek my head out and there's no one there. I just got shivers and like goosebumps all up my body. Hello? Stop messing around, is anyone there? Good luck to you tonight, Darcy. So she wrapped her stuff and took off. Oh, this had been happening to her all day. She had enough. Darcy does his first round of the night to check if the building is secure. And I was kind of a little unnerved. I'm sitting there, I'm writing out the nightly notes that I have to do. I hear our wheelchair button push. And it slowly swung open. 
and then it swung slowly closed like it normally does. I would have tried to blame an electrical problem if I hadn't heard the button being pushed. First the doorbell, and now the door is opening by itself. I start to get a bit nervous. It felt like something was there. I could not see it, but I could feel it. specifically how entities seem to be able to ring doorbells and open doors. But we do know that what seems to be happening is that the entities may have some kind of mass, and that might be what's behind the ability to open up objects. This is just a fantastic way to start my first overnight. I'm kind of so taken back by what happened that I'm struggling. I just, I couldn't really think straight based on those two events that just happened. Was it two coincidences or is something going on here? I had to go down to the basement to check the locks on the doors down there. I turn on the lights, make sure the doors are locked. I'm just nervous. I felt like something was there. Darcy reports experiencing this feeling of dread, which is common in cases of negative experiences with hauntings. And sometimes what this can be is simply our bodies and our instincts telling us that something is wrong. And when we don't pay attention to those instincts, it can't end well for us. I was really, really scared. I had to get out of there. There is something running at me. So I run up those stairs as fast as I could. I slam the door, I bolt lock it shut. aggressive banging. It was like two hands slamming against the door. I was terrified. I'm still out of breath, just kind of flabbergasted as to what just happened. 
can't call in sick for paranormal. And I can't really call my supervisors about it because what are they going to do about it? Building. Didn't happen, but I knew deep down, yeah, that I just experienced that. I just happened to glance over at the other computer monitor that had the camera system, and I see a man standing instantly think, oh, the person that I'm supporting must be up. But he's fast asleep. So now my mind is racing. Did someone break in? It's my job to be responsible for all these people and make sure that they're safe. All of a sudden, I just felt like there was someone or something in the room with me. And it was not happy I was there. And then he vanished. I'm thinking this must be the spirit that's causing everything to happen. So I go back into the office, and I look back at the monitor, and the man was still standing there. And what really scared me is he's looking directly into the camera. He's facing the camera. looks like there's horns slowly growing from his head. I jumped out of my skin. It was truly frightening. The entity that was staring back at me, it felt very evil, very, very sinister. I was really, really scared, but it's my job to make sure that they're safe. And there's no one there. I'm just like, this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Something was there, I feel it. and I just ran out. This scared me more than anything I've ever experienced. <laughs> Nothing's ever happened to the people we support. So it almost makes me think that this entity has something against the actual staff. And especially me. My worst fear would be that spirit somehow coming into the locked office. I don't, I don't even want to know what it would do to me. I lock myself into that room, and I just wait for morning. <laughs> I've always believed that spirits exist, and I've always believed that negative energy, negative entities existed, but now I can say I've experienced one. I was just like, this is not the place for me. I cannot be here. 
I decided never to return to that group home. Just having something torment me for just hours on hours. I just, I cannot put myself through that. It was a night from hell. It's 2014. Police officer Ernie Atwell is working the night shift, patrolling his regular beat around a hospital. I'm in my 23rd year. I've done just about everything you could think of within the two departments I've been with. I know this sounds kind of cliche, but I like helping people. Growing up, I didn't always have everything that I wanted, and I could see the struggles that my grandparents went through raising me. So having the authority that the police have, I love helping people. The hospital has various parking lots, but one to my liking was off of the main parking lot. When you're a police officer, sometimes when you have computer work to do or things along those lines, you have to find areas that are safe, a little bit secluded, and where you can keep your train of thought together. One evening, I was sitting in one of my normal spots. It was about 2.30 in the morning. It was a nice fall evening. I had all the windows down. That way, I can observe and I can hear and see everything. I started to get a cold, cold feeling inside. I just couldn't shake that dry burning in my chest from being startled by something that I couldn't figure out. I decided to go get some caffeine to get me through the rest of the night. Behind the hospital is a shortcut that we travel to get from one side of the city to the other. It's a pretty much secluded road that's very windy. It's trees on both sides, and there's a bridge underpass. There's nowhere for someone to walk. It was very quiet that night. No radio transmission. There was no other cars on the road. This woman appeared in front of my car. It was a split second, but that's an image that, that's just embedded in my brain. I couldn't make out facial features, just it was dark around her eyes that gave the appearance that she was staring at me. I was terrified. She had long, dark hair. She had her head down, like, almost as if she was sad. I immediately jumped out because I thought it was someone in distress. There, there was no one there. But there was nowhere for her to go. The only place she could have went was straight through a wooded area, but there was no footsteps, no broken brush through the wood line. 
I had absolutely no idea where this lady went. So what was I gonna do, call in, put a lookout for a lady that isn't there, that only I saw? I drove up and down that road about three more times, hoping to get a glimpse, not just of the lady, but anything that was out of the ordinary. Nothing happened. So what I did until I received my next call for service, I pulled my car underneath the bridge underpass. I just kept staring down the road, hoping to catch a glimpse of this lady. I come to the conclusion that that was a paranormal experience that I just witnessed. Spirits just want to be acknowledged, so they might appear to the living uh, in the way in which they died. I think that this spirit might be appearing to Ernie uh, in this hospital gown, ashen-faced, because she's trying to tell her story. At the end of my shift after seeing the lady, my cell phone rang. I recognized the number as a number from the hospital. call was coming from the security office at the hospital. Now, I've known this gentleman for quite a while. He asked me if I worked that night, and I could tell there was something in his voice that he needed to tell me. So what happened last night? Well, you know when you're uh, sitting in your car to do your paperwork? Yeah. Yeah, I do that too. He was sitting there with his windows down. The weather was very nice. Oh, are you okay? He heard someone are speak to okay? him. She asked if he was okay. When he looked up, there was a lady standing in front of his car. He said, I think the color of her skin was about as gray as the gown she was wearing and she had long, dark hair. His words to me was, I don't know where she come from. <gasps> no sooner he jumped out of his car, she was gone. I can't explain what happened. The thing that hit me like a freight train is when he gave that description, because I never told anyone. That's not something you normally run around and tell people that you're working with, that you just saw someone that basically vanished in front of your eyes. There have been similar reports. Really? I did try to comfort him a little bit, but I didn't tell him what I experienced. I decided to keep this to myself until I got more, you know, evidence of something that I saw. Two days later, Ernie has just delivered a patient to the hospital when he is stopped by a familiar face. Cardiology. Officer Atwell, Cardiology. do you remember me? Sure. I remembered her from responding to her house. Her mother was having issues with her heart. Officer, can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. Oh, you were so nice when you helped with my mother, and I know that you won't make fun of me. OK, so I was just in the hospital. Just time. the day prior, she took her mother to a cardiovascular appointment. She decided to catch up on some emails. Are you OK? There was a lady standing in front of her car. The lady was gone. 
based on where her car was parked, there's no human possible way someone could exit that parking lot that quickly. Like, I, it was like she was in This lady or described I jumped out of my car from to head to toe what she was wearing, the complexion of her skin, even the color of her hair, everything matched up to exactly what I saw that night on that road. I know you probably think I'm crazy. No, 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 I believe you, I do. And now I have two different people that do not know each other, but for some reason they're coming to me with this. Maybe this is just the way the lady is trying to get in contact with me. I was just so overwhelmed that two people saw this lady that I saw. The two people that saw her saw her at the same exact hospital parking lot. The only difference was when I saw her, I saw her on the road. But somehow I knew it centered around the hospital. I wanted to know what she wanted. So I had my digital camera and I decided to go back to the bridge underpass. As I passed where I originally saw this lady, my flashlight setting beside me came on all by itself. So I immediately stopped my car. I took out my digital camera and I took a series of photos. This smoky mist appeared. It actually looked as if someone took a puff of a cigar and blew it in front of the lens of my camera. and it hit me like a freight train. I think I know who you are. I remember a few years prior, a lady took her own life by jumping off that bridge that I was backed up under. Maybe she was the person that took her own life from that bridge. The gray lady maybe was trying to let me see her again to give me some sort of message. Any of this phenomena is going to appear terrifying to us. Uh, the spirit doesn't mean that. It's just, it's just crying out for help. Uh, it's crying out for someone to come and help them, uh, to put them in a state of peace. Now, there's a lot of skeptics in the world. And they will criticize you. And they will deem that you're crazy because you believe in ghosts. But the one thing that I have on my side, I'm the biggest skeptic. You can be a skeptic and still believe. Just like police work, you have to have that evidence. You have to have that beyond a reasonable doubt. I still continue to try to research this and see if I can contact her again to see if there's some sort of help or some sort of message. Not a message necessarily to me, but I might be the one able to get her message to someone else. To this day, every time I need to travel from one side of the city to the other, I travel that same road, hoping to catch a glimpse of her, hoping to catch a glimpse of any type of evidence that she may still be there. And that's what I continue to do every day that I travel that road. Seventeen-year-old high school basketball player Leston Campbell has just been rushed to hospital by his mother. I was at a practice, and all of a sudden, I felt a uh, strong chest pain, and it lingered from my stomach, chest area, and then all the way around 
to my back area. I'm assuming that maybe it's just an injury, maybe I probably got hit wrong playing basketball. I was thinking that, uh, you know, oh, this could be the end of my basketball career. I'm young and I'm just like, I, I haven't done anything yet. Hang on, baby. We're gonna get some help. As soon as we go straight into the doors, I feel a breath of air just comes in and chills crawl up me. My mom didn't feel anything. I'm thinking this is pretty strange. This is not normal. Dr. Lopez, report to cardiology. Dr. Lopez, the cardiologist. Soon after his arrival, Leston finds out the cause of his extreme pain. They said, you have a uh, air socket behind your lung, and that's pretty much what's causing the sharp pain that you're feeling. I need you to do me a favor. Can you hold all this on, please? They hooked me up to IV. They actually put a oxygen mask over my face to try to uh, burst the air bubble. If the bubble doesn't burst, it'll collapse the lung. They wanted to keep me in the hospital for the night to see if it will progress. And if it progressed, then that's when they will have to do the surgery. When visiting hours are over, Leston's mom must leave for the night. I'm just laying there with the oxygen mask over my face and then IV stuck in my arm and in the worst pain possible. And the worst part was that I was completely alone. <coughs> the only person that was left in the room was my neighbor. <coughs> I would always hear him coughing. <coughs> Later that night, my stomach started giving me issues, started irritating me. My stomach is hurting so bad that I might as well just go to the washroom to see what's going on. I did notice that my neighbor's TV was on. So I said, well, let me do this guy a favor and just turn it off so that he doesn't wake up. My neighbor wasn't there, and his bed was made up. I'm nervous. This is out of the ordinary. This is pretty strange, and I wanted to get out of this. So I left, I left my room in order to get to the washroom, which is down the hallway. When I did go into the washroom, there were flickering on lights. and then there were definitely more cold air. All of the hairs on my arms and my back were just standing up. I never shut the door and the door was closed. The door didn't open. I'm, I'm just freaked out. And it was very terrifying. I was very afraid. And I need to go find someone.
there is no one at the uh, nurse's station, the TV monitors were pretty much black. Uh, it's just no one's around, no nurses, uh, and then pretty much everything looked like it never had been touched. Is anybody here? I start to get that feeling of that cold air again. And like it feels like someone's next to me. I'm just freaked out and it's it's I'm scared and terrified. I think cold spots, which have been reported throughout history and associated with ghosts, uh, it is a spirit trying to pull the energy out of the environment, out of the living perhaps, which usually gives off heat. So when this energy is evaporating, when it's disappearing, when it's being pulled out of our cells, uh, we're just left with this cold feeling. I was just, just terrified, like, how do I get out of this place? heart is pumping, uh, my uh, adrenaline is rushing. Maybe I can just get to another floor that's just normal. Someone should be down there that can help me. There should be nurses, doctors, someone should be on that bottom main floor. I was pretty much scared that I, I wouldn't make it out. I wouldn't make it back safe. <laughs> that whole bottom floor looked at like it was just abandoned. Everything was just gone. Papers were just all over the floor. It was just a creepy, a creepy environment. But something was up. Something was very up. I'm thinking that, oh, well, maybe it could be a dream, but this dream is too vivid. This is too vivid, too much has happened. This is real. And then a gurney brushes past. And it's getting pushed without no one pushing it, which makes it even more creepier. not just like a ghost. It's like you're in a whole nother dimension. Like it's a whole nother world where this is pretty much happening and then I'm able to see it and I'm able to feel it. And I said, I gotta get back to my room. As I'm running to my room, it feel like I'm running slow. Uh, I feel like it's pretty much slow motion. And I'm just looking around and no one's there. I was pretty much scared that I, I wouldn't make it out. I was scared that I wouldn't make it out of this world or, or this dimension that I was in. I was terrified. 
Uh, I figured, well, you know, no one can help me at this point. No one. There might have been a spirit portal nearby, allowed Gleston to see the comings and goings of our dimension to the other dimension. There are reports of people who enter places that are so saturated with electromagnetic energy that they're able to see things and perceive things that other people cannot. Might have been able to see, peer into this spirit world, peer through the veil. He might have been seeing what they were seeing, what their world looked like, the comings and goings of these spirits between dimensions, this world superimposed over our physical realm. <laughs> I actually get to my room. <laughs> No one's there, it's just me. And then my neighbor, of course, is still not there. Please, 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 please. Come on. Please. I'm just holding my hands, and I'm pretty much praying to myself that hopefully this, this goes away. Hopefully, you know, this all would just be back normal again. I just stay like that just sitting in my bed and just hoping nothing comes in and nothing bothers me. I eventually fell asleep. Leston, Leston. How's my brave man doing this morning? I woke up at about I want to say 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I look around, and of course, the whole hospital is lit up. <laughs> I did hear my neighbor, and uh, of course, he was uh, coughing. It was so crazy because after that night, my main focus wasn't even the surgery. My main focus was just wake up and to see that everything goes back to normal. How did you sleep last night? I held it in and kept it a secret. I wouldn't know how to explain it to anyone uh, because the whole night before was just terrifying. I slept fine. Great news. The air bubble has cleared up. Your tests show that. You don't need to have surgery anymore. <sighs> it felt like uh, all the pain that was up here just dropped down and went away. Uh, I was relieved that everything was back normal. It changed my life because now it brings me with an open mindset. It makes me understand that a lot of things out there is unexplainable. It's a whole nother dimension as far as paranormal world. It's out there and I believe that it lives within our world as well as it's a connection between the two. If someone say they believe in something, you can't say, oh, I don't believe in that. It's gonna be instances where you might have to see it, and then it'll change your mind. <laughs>